welcome to Children's Church. Good morning, children, and welcome to Children's Church. Let's all get up and get ready for Children's Church Peace and Worship. worship so wonderfully. Now let's settle down our hearts, close our eyes and raise up your praying hands and repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God, thank you. Thank you. For this day. For this day. Where we can come. Where we can come. And see all our friends. 
and see all our friends. I pray that. I pray that. We'll remember. We'll remember. To thank you. To thank you. To love you. To love you. And want to know you more. And want to know you more. All these things in Jesus' name. Pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Last week, we learned about the fruit of gentleness. We learned that we must be gentle both inside and out. Can you guess what fruit of the Spirit we'll be learning about today? Here's a quick hint. If you guessed goodness, you are absolutely... But what does it mean to have goodness in us? Is there a difference between when a Christian is good and when someone who doesn't believe in Jesus is good? Huh? Hmm. Well, there is a difference. And the difference lies in where does the goodness come from? Let's turn our Bibles to Numbers 22 to 24 to find out more. During the time when the Israelites were moving around in the wilderness, they came to the plains of Moab. When the king of Moab, Balak, saw them coming, he was afraid because he had heard about how God was helping the Israelites to win battles against their enemies. King Balak then sent messengers to a man named Balaam, a well-known man with spiritual powers to curse or speak blessing over people. King Balak wanted to pay Balaam to put a curse on the Israelites. After hearing the messengers, Balaam asked them to stay overnight and he will give them an answer in the morning after asking God. 
Balak wanted to go with the messengers and curse the Israelites because he knew that King Balak would pay him well if he did. That night, the Lord warned Balaam not to go to Moab and not to curse Israel, for they were God's chosen people. So the next day, Balaam refused to go with the king's messengers. King Balak then sent more messengers to persuade Balaam and promised Balaam a big reward if he would come and curse Israel. Although Balaam already knew God didn't want him to go, he still asked the messengers to stay overnight again so that he could find out what else God would say. Actually, Balaam was tempted by the reward King Balak would give. God knew Balaam's heart. That night, God came to Balaam and told him to follow King Balak's men, but he must only do what God had told him to do. So, Balaam followed the messengers to go to Moab on his donkey. Along the way, God sent an angel to stop Balaam that only the donkey could see. The angel was holding a sword, so the donkey turned aside into a field. Balaam was angry and beat the donkey to get it back on the road. The angel of the Lord went ahead again and stood at a narrow place before the donkey. When the donkey saw the angel again, it pressed close to the wall and crushed Balaam's foot. Balaam was very angry and hit the donkey with a stick again. The angel went further ahead at another narrow place. When the donkey saw the angel again, it laid down under Balaam. Balaam was so angry that he beat the donkey once again. Then, the Lord gave Balaam's donkey the power to talk. What have I done to make you hit me three times? You have made me look foolish. I wish I had a sword in my hand and I could kill you right now. I am your very own donkey. You have ridden me for years. Have I ever done this to you before? No. Then, God opened Balaam's eyes and he saw the angel standing in the road with his sword. Balaam was so afraid that he bowed down to God and confessed his sin of disobedience. The angel then told Balaam to continue going to Moab, but he can only say what God tells him to do. When Balaam met King Balak, he told the king that he can only say what God tells him to. Later, Balaam spoke words of blessing over the nation of Israel three times instead of cursing Israel. King Balak was angry that Balaam was blessing his enemies instead of cursing them. He asked Balaam to leave at once and did not give him any reward. Hi children, I'm Tizelis. And I'm Coco Alex. In the Bible story earlier, Balaam had told the messengers that he had to ask for God's instructions when he actually wanted the king's reward and was hoping that God would change his mind. Oh, no wonder Balaam told the second group of messengers to stay overnight and wait for his answer. He did not need to do that because he already knew that God had told him not to go to Moab. Yeah, Balaam should have told the second group of messengers what God had already said. Yeah, so Balaam actually cared more about the reward that King Balak would give. At the end of the day, even though Balaam blessed Israel and did not curse them, it was because God sent the angel to warn him. Balaam was just trying to save his own life. And that is not what goodness should look like. True goodness is not like a hat that you can wear sometimes and take off other times. Hmm, this is really interesting. But what does that mean? Let's take a look at this scenario to find out. Oh, looks like there is something wrong with Esther. But I don't know how to comfort people and comforting people is so troublesome. Okay, children. Mm -hmm. Esther, are you okay? Oh, Esther, are you okay? Do you need help? I, I lost my wallet. Okay, why don't I have you look for it? That's good, Eric. Please go help her find her wallet. Okay, come. Let's go check the corridor. Oh wait. At the end of the day, Eric helped Esther. Isn't that enough? Yes, he did help Esther. But it was because he cared more about what the teacher think of him than about Esther. 
he put on the goodness hat for himself. Oh, so how should goodness look like in us? Let's take a look. Oh, looks like there is something wrong with Esther. Hmm, I don't know how to comfort people, but I cannot leave her like this too. Hey Esther, are you okay? I, I lost my wallet. Oh, when did you last see it? Uh... Okay class, uh, Esther, are you okay? Oh, Esther lost her wallet and we are trying to find it. Oh, how about you guys go and check at the corridor? Mm, yeah, good idea, Mr. Tan. Can we go now? Sure, go ahead. Okay, let's go check together. Ah, I think I got it now. God wants us to have goodness in our hearts, rather than acting good. That's right. Goodness is not a hat. Goodness is a fruit of the Spirit, and when we live by the Holy Spirit, we will grow goodness inside and out. Oh, so it's either we choose to go our own way, or be guided by the Holy Spirit? Yep, and God's way is always better than our way. Thank you Coco Alex and Tita Liz for teaching us about the fruit of goodness. A good tree bears good fruit. So a life according to the Holy Spirit will help us to grow good spiritual fruits. Also, let us continue to ask the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us into growing the fruit of goodness in our hearts. Oh, looks like it's time for class. I hope everybody is enjoying worshipping and playing games together as a big group. Thank you Jesus for showing us your goodness by easing the restrictions. That's all for today's Children Church. Bye bye Welcome, Welcome to, to Children's Church! Children's Church. <laughs> Cut! <laughs> How about you guys check at the corridor? Oh, okay. Let's go check together. Walk! <laughs> I was like... I thought she was going to walk first. That's why I was like, not moving. I thought you were going to walk first because... Easy to walk first. Just now we walk first. Bruh, they're acting good. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed.